going on YouTube? What's going on Facebook? Big Dog Brett. Uh, got a real special guest for you guys here today. I want to welcome him to the channel. So, uh, who do we have on the phone line this morning? I, I believe it's Uncle Lou. Yeah, good morning and ass. Uncle Lou here. Hey, how's it going, Uncle Lou? Man, it's going great. It's rainy, though. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great weather for football, though. Hey, uh, today we were going to be going over and covering the, uh, the Legends versus the, the Fleet game like we do every week. I um, wanted to talk about the, the differences between last week's game and this week's game and, and what you think about the, the quarterback situation to start with. So. Well, I think Aaron Murray should have been given the start at least one week sooner. Um, well, hell, he didn't even get to start last week. It was an injury. But to me, he should have been given the start in week three, that first home game. Um, now, I, 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 and it's not, I get it. Okay, obviously he's crowd favorite. He went to Georgia, Atlanta. You know, the, the legends are in Atlanta. So, obviously he's the crowd favorite. But it, it's more than that. I mean, first two weeks, the offense was just absolutely pitiful. Um, I mean, it's not like we were losing games 40 to 35 or, you know, you know, or, or, or whatever. You get it. I mean, the offense was just anemic. I, I, I didn't really understand the harm in making a switch week three, that first home game on with Aaron Murray. And then last week to send uh, to send Matt Sims out again. I, I mean, it was just absolutely ridiculous. And, I, and I, I don't like injuries. I never want anybody at any level of football for any team to get injured. Um, but, you know, it's it's hard to deny the the offense just seemed to to click better with Aaron Murray in there. So um, you know, thank God they're giving the start this week, and um, and we'll see how it goes. Well, I, I was pretty sure that that Kevin Coyle was probably told by numerous fans that if he did not want to riot, that he probably should put Aaron Murray in. Um, yeah, and it, Kevin Coyle, I mean, that's a whole other situation. This yeah. guy's in way over his head. He never should have been given. I mean, I get it. It's the AAF. It's a starter league and all that. But you get, I mean, this guy's never been a head coach. It, it, just, it just made no sense. He never, he's in over his head. He, should, he shouldn't have been made head coach of that team to start with. And I know there was some problems um, or some disruptions or whatever leading up to the start of the season. You lose your offensive coordinator, a new one comes in. That, that's going to affect an offense. I get it. But, um I mean, Matt Sims had, what, two offensive touchdowns in the first three games? I mean, that's just pitiful. Yeah, and I mean, and here's the other thing is that I, I do understand that the teams were, were trying to find a rhythm, but it's not like it was an uneven playing field. All the teams were trying to find their rhythm, and because of that, there should have been at least, um, uh, at least a little more activity on offense. Matt Sims never – I said, you know, the first game I felt like, okay, you know, he's got to get comfortable – course I wanted Aaron Murray in I'm wearing my autographed Aaron Murray hat I mean he, I've always been a fan of Aaron Murray um, it, it just seemed to me that after the second game when you saw that Matt Sims couldn't get the offense moving he was he's been sacked 10 times he's just not comfortable in the pocket he just he didn't belong there and, and I and I think it shows I think everybody can see maybe now why Matt Sims is not pro but I also think it makes a uh, heck of an argument to turn around and see Aaron Murray step in and, and complete passes, run the offense, move things around, keep the rhythm going, and, and pick up, which was pretty much what I would have considered a, a team that's kind of hopes had been dashed by Matt Sims and then turn around and, and get that team their first win. Uh, I think that shows that Aaron Murray does have the capability potentially to be a, a, a strong quarterback somewhere in the league in the NFL. Well, and – and you mentioned the sacks that Matt Sims took, and, and obviously the Legends have one of the worst offensive lines in the AAF, but that seems like even more of a reason to put somebody in that can run around a little bit. And we saw that with Aaron Murray last week. And, you know, uh, Matt Sims, way too many sacks, couldn't escape any pressure out of the pocket. Um, a, a turnover machine. Um, I mean, even last week, give Matt Sims the start. Okay, fine. Takes the team right down the field, gets in the red zone. What happens? He turns the ball over. Um, it, it, and it was just getting to be way too much of that. Um, he had two touchdowns and six interceptions in the first three, in his first three games. I mean, that, that's just. Well, there's there's college there's no quarterback. Not to make a change. You're zero and three. Your yep. offense is the worst in the league. Your quarterback leaves the league in interceptions. Um, there's only eight. 
completion percentage. So somebody's got two quarterbacks that are better than Matt Sims. <laughs> I mean, it just wasn't making any sense. So, you know, it was, it was time to give Aaron Murray a, a, a shot. And uh, and this will be a big game this week against um, Memphis because they're not that good either. And, of course, they made a change of quarterback too. So we're going to get to see uh, Aaron Murray versus Mettenberger part two. Yeah. Tomorrow. Now, now Zach Mettenberger, he played at LSU, <clears throat> and uh, and I don't believe that worked out to to his benefit the last time he played against Aaron Murray, did it? You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, hold on. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry about that. I accidentally uh, hit the hit the mute button on my end, but I can oh, hear okay. you, I can hear you just fine. Rookie yeah. mistake. So I mean, that'll be a good <laughs> game tomorrow. I, I, I mean, that Aaron Murray Zach Met, uh, Mettenberger game from back in uh, was it two thousand. 13. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I think it was that Georgia LSU game in Athens. I mean, I, that's one of the most exciting games that's been played in Athens in probably the last 30 years. A back and forth game ended up, uh, I, I don't remember the exact score, but it was something like 42 to 38 or, or something. One of those high scoring back and forth games, and, um, and, and we scored it in to win it. But um, we'll see how they look tomorrow. Well, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, to me, I know that Aaron Murray has the capability of running that offense. I, and I always kind of get into the thought process in the locker room. Most of the time I get it right. Got it wildly wrong against Texas. But I think that, that this team is going to – I think that the legends are going to be on the upswing. I think they're going to be highly motivated. I think they're going to see that spark of hope that Aaron Murray was able to bring to the team. And you're going to see him push even harder. That, and that's just yeah. my opinion. You're not the only one that thinks that Atlanta was a 15-point underdog last week. Wow. Uh, with Matt Sims as the starter. They're a two-and-a-half-point favorite this week. And, and I get it, Memphis, like I, like I mentioned, um, not a very good team. I mean, they, they, they lost their first three games, too, before winning last week, same as Atlanta. And, of course, this game is in, it, in Atlanta, so that makes a little bit of a difference. But to go from a 15-point underdog one week to a two-and-a-half-point favorite following week tells me, um, that just like what you just said, there, there's a lot of people who, who think that the legends uh, are going to be better offensively with Aaron Murray. Yeah, and, uh, Aaron Murray, it looked like he's, it, you know, going back and now that I've thought about it a little bit, going back and, and looking at how Aaron Murray was standing on the sideline, I thought that he was upset, which he probably was. But I also think that he was sitting there going, Go ahead and make a mistake that they let them put me in. Let them put me in. And I, this is going to be my job. And so it showed me that at game four, he had taken all of the practice seriously. He had taken all of the opportunity he had ahead of him very seriously. And he wanted to take full advantage of um, the opportunity that they gave him to, to, to go out and, and make that team his. And that's what he did. So hats yeah. off to Aaron Murray for that. And let's, let's be honest but before we – sound like complete potatoes here it, it, it's not like atlanta went out and scored 100 points last week with aaron murray right they, they still look like they have one of the worst offenses in the league but the quarterback position is going to be better it seems with aaron murray than it was with matt sims i, I don't expect aaron murray to turn the atlanta legends into an offense like Orlando has. Uh, we just don't have the talent around him, um, and, and that's been pretty obvious. So, like, the offensive line is terrible. Receivers have dropped a lot of passes, things like that. But um, I do think the offense would be better with Aaron Murray than it was with Matt Sims. And the defense has not played bad um, no. outside of week one. And even in week one against Orlando, which is probably the best offensive team in the league, we did a really good job against them in the first half. Um, I mean, we held them to two touchdowns, mostly. Um, I, I don't know if, 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 if you remember how that first half ended against Orlando, but we had the ball with about 40 seconds to go. It was like fourth and eight on about the 50-yard line. We'd done nothing offensively all game, and for some reason, Coyle thought it would be a good idea to go for it on yeah. fourth and eight well, with less than a minute to go in the half. And, of course, we didn't get it which gave Orlando the ball at midfield. And they momentum. Threw a bomb, pass interference, gave them first and goal on the 10-yard line or whatever it was, and, and they scored, um, you know, to go up like 22 to, to 6 or whatever it was at halftime. But 
really, we, the defense really only responsible for two of those touchdowns in the first half. And then week two, three, and four, the defense played well, too. Um, but when the offense is just three and out, three and out, three and out, turnover, 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 and even when you do get a decent drive, you get down in the red zone, you can't capitalize. On any level of football, eventually the defense is just going to give up or give out in the second half, and that's what we've seen with Atlanta. So I, I, I'm not upset with their defense. I know they've given up some points in some games, but again, I blame a lot of that on the uh, on the offense. So, I mean, I expect Atlanta to win this weekend, uh, and like I said, apparently I'm not the only one because they are a two-and-a-half-point favorite here. I expect them to win this game against uh, Memphis. Memphis, either Memphis or Atlanta is the worst team in the league. We'll find out. Well, I, tomorrow, I think it's Memphis, and I expect Atlanta with Aaron Murray getting his first start to come out and win this game at home. I think, and I agree. I, I'm going to give you a phrase here that I've been thinking about since last week. I think Aaron Murray, or since earlier in the week, I think Aaron Murray is going to come out and win this game despite Kevin Coyle's best efforts to sabotage it. I think that every player on on the team it is more qualified to, to play football than Kevin Coyle is to coach it. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you there. And and uh, listen, I mean, these are two teams in a similar spot. I mean, both both started zero and three. Both got a finally got their first win last week. So you have to think both teams are heading into this game with a positive state of mind. Um, I, I think home field advantage is going to be the difference in this one. And uh, I think Atlanta's going to pull it out. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you think the, the impact players are, other than other than Aaron Murray, who do you think the impact players are going to be on the offense? I, I, there really hasn't been any, I don't think. There hasn't been any one player on Atlanta's offense that, is, that has stood out to me. I've been unimpressed with the ground game. The offensive line has not played well. And, um, I mean, the receivers have made some plays, but overall, as a group, there's just been too many drop passes. I mean, they have a lot they have to, uh, a lot they have to clean up, and and th- th- that's sort of what I was getting at when I said, let, you know, let's let's not pretend like Atlanta's about to start <laughs> start scoring 50 points a game with Aaron Murray. Um, they have a lot of, of work to do offensively, and I'm I'm really not too sure how much better their offense can get this season with the current personnel. I, I think it can get a little bit better because I just think Aaron Murray is better than Matt. Sims and we saw one thing we saw last week from Aaron Murray he's not going to make the offensive line better but he's not afraid to scramble and run he has some good runs last week I think you'll see more of that today um well I think I mean I I know nobody wants to get hurt and I get that but I mean this is the last chance for a lot of these players I mean there's not really any reason to save anything uh I, I mean I expect Aaron Murray um you, you know, I don't expect him to be afraid to take off a run or anything like that. I, I think he'll have a good game. Well, I, I think that it forces the defense to have to look at a different um, uh, a different fold, a different wrinkle that the offense can provide, and that's the fact that you can't – Aaron Murray's not going to stand in a pocket if it's not there. Um, one of the players that I think is, is going to be – and I'm high on this guy. I think this guy's going to do well. I think you're going to see more and more of him. Is the is the tight end Keith Tobridge? He, he's six four, and and, I, and I've said this before. He's not blazingly fast, but he has a vision about him that he can kind of see where he needs to be, and he'll let Aaron Murray throw him open. Uh, he he's an excellent weapon in that backfield, and I think without him, the offense would would struggle mightily. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about the fleet um, other than you know they they've struggled as much as we have, but I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, yeah, the Express, though, Memphis. Oh, Memphis Express, sorry. My mistake. You're, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, they struggled to quarterback rotation, just like what we have going on. You know, so they've got Mettenberger in there now. Um, so we'll see. I mean, o- only one team can be the worst, and we'll find out tomorrow which one it is. <laughs> but uh, hopefully our legends can come out on top. Well, what is um, – I, I know that I know that you, uh, you, you're really good at picking, picking scores and picking bets here. Um, Kind of, kind of give us a rundown on, on, on what you think and, 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 and where you get your information and, and who our viewers can, can go talk to. Uh, for the AAF, I, to, to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I mean, I don't see ESPN covering the AAF that, 
much really there's not really a lot of places to go for information on the aaf which can be a benefit um to to uh anyone who happens to be a gambling type person if you're willing to put in the time effort and and, and research online uh to really dig into some of these games it's a great opportunity to make some money on these uh on these games i mean the the, the longer the, the longer uh, a league lasts, the harder it is to pick against the number. I mean, these people in Vegas, um, I mean, they know what they're doing. But right now, there's just not a lot of historical or past information to go on with these players or teams. And you've seen a lot of these lines have ended up being way off. Uh, we mentioned last week Atlanta being a 15-point underdog. They win the game. Um, now, a lot of people who watch me and you are college fans, so they're they're used to seeing lines that are in the – teens or even the 20s but in professional football any line over six or seven points is huge um if you watch the nfl at all uh you know three four five six points you you rarely see a line any higher than that when it comes to professional football so some of these lines are just way out of whack here so if you're willing to take the time um you know to, to do a little bit of research try to find some things out you can make some money uh you can make some money gambling on the aaf awesome um. Yeah, I really want to. I really want to thank you for coming on the show, Uncle Lou. Is there is there anything else you wanted to throw out there? Anything else you wanted to cover uh, before we wrap up today? No, I appreciate you. Uh, you having me on, you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen my channel, check it out. Just search for Uncle Lou on YouTube. You'll find it. Uh, we have a good time over there, and uh, this was fun. I, I will. I will tell you that. Uh, just as a, a personal note, I have uh, Uncle Lou was the reason I kind of got into doing YouTube, and and it was really because watching his channel uh, helped lower my cholesterol. He got he got me off that Lipitor, which was killing me. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, doctor's job is to keep medicine keeps you sick. There's no money in a cure. Remember that money is in treatment of symptoms. There's no money in a cure. Uh, so I, I'm glad I was able to uh, <laughs> glad I was able to help you out. And if if anyone listening or watching hasn't watched the AAF or you haven't even given it a chance, give it a chance. It's not the XFL from 15 years ago. That was terrible football. That, that, that wasn't even football. Uh, that was wrestling on a football field. Yep. This is football. Um, is, is it football on the level of the NFL? No, but nothing ever will be. But it's the closest we've ever seen to, to, to anything near the NFL. And if you guys are college fans, you'll recognize a lot of the names you see, no matter which AAF team you happen to watch, you will recognize a lot of names. Yes, there are some nobodies, uh, you know, some people that some linemen or whatever that you've never heard of. Yes, of course there are. But every single team has some big name players that if even if you're just a college football fan, you'll recognize a lot of these names. Aaron Murray, uh, Denard Robinson, uh, Trent Richardson. Yep. Uh, Akeem Hunt. I mean, you'll recognize a lot of these names are big-time college players that were never able to, to crack through to a starting lineup in the NFL um, or, or big-time college players. I, or, or there's some NFL players who just kind of washed out. Akeem Hunt, we, we mentioned. Trent Richardson spent a lot of time in the NFL. Even Aaron Murray spent a lot of time in the NFL, never got a start in a regular season game. But if you, if you haven't given the AAF a chance, give it a shot. Um, you know, the, the games come on every Saturday and Sunday. There's two games every Saturday, two games every Sunday. You got Orlando and Birmingham playing today, which will be a really good team. A lot of people think those are the two best teams in the league. Uh, yeah. They play at 2 o'clock today. Check that game out. Um, Salt Lake and San Diego play tonight at 8. And then tomorrow you've got Memphis and Atlanta at 3 and San Antonio and Arizona at, at 7. And all the games are on TV, NFL Network, CBS Sports Network. You may have to do some looking around to find them. Um but you can find them. And if you want to make some money, go to betnow.eu. You can gamble on these AAF games. And when you sign up over at betnow.eu, make sure you enter the promo code Uncle Lou, and they'll give you a 50% bonus on whatever you deposit. It's free money. Yep. That's awesome. Well, Uncle Lou, again, I uh, really appreciate you coming on the channel. Uh, if you guys have been on this long, obviously hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to go over and check out Uncle Lou's channel. Um, he's got tons of content. He puts out videos at least two three times a week and uh, as he would say some of them are almost watchable so we really almost, appreciate yeah. you guys go ahead uncle lou <laughs> all right brett i appreciate you having me on man i'll talk to you soon awesome thanks lou you guys all have right, a bye. great day and as always god bless
and go dogs.